Good morning, it is The Mountain Report. My name is Greg Powers, living the dream on this still winter spring. What would they call that? I don't know, but we're gonna enjoy it. 30 degrees as we start the day off today. Last 48 hours, 20 inches of snow. That's a lot, that's more than you have fingers. That's all your fingers and your toes equals sit up straight, Greg. 20, uh, uh, 20 inches of snow in the last 48 hours. And we are looking at uh, just a mild wind today, and we're going to uh, join, Captain Kip will join us, rather. He's going to give us our first tracks report. We've got some great information on the eclipse, and we also have some stuff on our Facebook if you're looking for some local information, you know, uh, about where to look and all that stuff. Well, we have more than that, but uh, in depth, you can find that on our Facebook. And uh, we've got much more to cover here this morning, a full show, great guests, and we're going to start off with a great weatherman, the one and only, Outside Andy, good morning. The WSKI TV 17 weather report is brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. Visit them in the village or online at sugarloafmountainside.com. Good morning, skiers and riders, Sugarloaf and Karen Bassett Valley. Hope you're ready for a great weekend, enjoying the outdoors here at the mountain. Time for your latest local forecast. You can find this and much more on our website, WSKITV.com. And this weather brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. We'll see snow showers throughout the day. Could see an inch or two of accumulation, which is some great news. Grab those goggles that show some visibility out there. 35 to 37 at the base with a light north wind. Summit temperatures 24 to 26 with a noticeable breeze. So we'll have to keep an eye on those upper lifts. Stay tuned to the Mountain Report. We'll keep you updated. Isolated snow showers continue for Sunday. We'll see highs getting into the mid-40s at the base. Lower 30s at the summit. And still holding on to a bit of a noticeable breeze up towards the top from the north-northwest. Sunny skies for the big day on Monday. The eclipse should be a great day for it. 54 for a high, so nice and warm. Then mostly sunny skies for Tuesday with a high of 50. And then, look at that, some snow showers roll in for the day on Wednesday. So get out there. A great forecast for this weekend heading into the eclipse on Monday. Hope you can get out and enjoy it. As far as our trail conditions, 154 trails to ski and ride on. 12 lifts getting you there. 54 groomers. Uh, groomers and we're looking at powder and packed powder. Over 19 inches of new snow in the past couple of days. So get out there and enjoy it. Uh, bracket Basin, everything's open. Snubber gets going at 8 o'clock, 8.30 Scott Duster and Skidway, 9 o'clock the Muscalator, Skyline and Double Runner West kicking at 8.30 as well, and the Super Quad open till 4.20 today. West Mountain returns today at 8 o'clock. That'll get you up from the golf course to the Bucksaw Express, which is going at 8.30. King Pine and Wolfetree at 8.30 as well for the east side, and 9 a.m. the uppermost lift, Timberline. We'll get going at 9 a.m., winds, weather, and conditions permitting. As far as grooming, last night, Timberline, Bridal Chain, Tote Road, Kings and Hayburner, as well as Comp Hill, Narrow Gauge, Spilly and Sluice, all gone to the line, as well as Wedge. Uh, over on the east side, Hallback, Ram Down, and Lower Boomauger. Down lower on the east side, Woofle Tree, Buckboard, Springboard, all kinds of good stuff over there. And Scoot, Windrow, West Mountain, Horseshoe, and Good Chance on the west side, as well as all of the new trails uh, off of the new Bucksaw Express lift will be nice and groomed out for you and all the trails around the base area as well uh terrain park stopping grounds open we're building drop line uh but plenty of fun to be had with the terrain parks have been doing a great job also the outdoor center is open uh through the eclipse day uh they'll have the bumus cafe open as well from noon to four and the sugarloaf sports and fitness center for some great indoor activities or some great 
food at the cafe. The Trails End Steakhouse and Tavern right up on, in Eustace Village. Uh, they've got events happening all weekend long, live music and specials, as well as the Rack Barbecue right at the bottom of the Axis Road. And don't forget to throw out their Rack Rescue Breakfast Shack from Saturday and Sunday mornings. They'll have that offered. And the Maiden Main Shop right on Main Street in Kingfield. They've got Eclipse t-shirts on special, so check that out right on Main Street. And Main Street in Stratton, the Looney Moose Cafe. Bob will be opened up for Monday, April 8th until noon for breakfast. And lots happening here at the mountain for the Eclipse as well. Uh, parties on the beach, up at Bullwinkles, all kinds of good stuff going on. And the Super Quad will once again be open until 420. The Quad Cam is available so you can see exactly what's happening at the base of the mountain in real time so you can know before you go. Also, check it out. We've got our live mountain reports this weekend and next weekend we'll have a watch and win. So be sure to tune in whether you're watching us streaming or on Channel 17. I'm Jeff Kennedy, designated broker for Mountainside Real Estate. I've been a sugar loafer since 1984. I actually uh, came here as an intern out of Penn State. I fell in love with the area and I've been here ever since. Well, I've actually been selling real estate for Sugarloaf since 1984. Um, and that, that just gives you a wealth of, of experience. Um, and we know the people, we know the owners here. I mean, I've been here, being here 40 years, you get to know everybody. We're on Main Street in the village, open seven days a week, uh, 8.30 to 5, come see us. Back, cat coming off the hill, cat heading up to uh, Bowlingle. It's going to be a big day up there today. As we start the day off today on the Mountain Report, 30 degrees, Mountainside Real Estate, bringing you this live quad cam shot. And look at that. It is uh, the, no snow blowing around there this morning, and it is a Saturday. And again, we have gotten lots and lots of snow, 20 inches, uh, 30 degrees today. It's still cool out there. You want to dress for it today. Captain will tell us more about the details and what to, you know, what to set your socks at and things like that. It's windy up top. Too. It, 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 there is a breeze up top. We're going to find out. We'll talk to a ski patrol and find out uh, how much of a breeze there is up there. 154 trails open. Snow showers happening, and it's looking pretty good out there. And we have got an eclipse coming up. We've got all kinds of great information and much to share with you, including this uh, at the Anti-Gravity Complex. Stop on by for indoor activities galore. They're looking for summer humps still, so uh, you might want to consider that. Daniel Jalbert's got an act, art exhibit there on the 3rd. There'll be a reception coming up, and they can help you out with your tax as well. They've got some volunteers down there at the Carabasset Valley Public Library. Main Ski and Snowboard Museum, they're open on the access road. Stop on by and say hello to discover the old Heritage of Skiing and the Sport and Fitness Center open 7 a.m. And you can go in there, reserve hot tub, give them a call ahead of time. Open the Downhill Supply Company with equipment tuning and repair and uh, deals, deals, deals. Carabasset Valley Coffee. Now, they don't serve coffee down there at the factory, at you know, at the outlet, but you can pick up your favorite coffee when you call ahead. While you're in Kingfield, you should stop by for the end of the season. Deals at the Made in Main shop right there on Main Street. Happy Tunes is open. Of course, they have got great ski tuning, and they have got all skis 30% off, and they got a lot, I'm going to tell you that. Spillover Motel, the Eclipse glasses for sale, $3 a pair. You can have snacks and bevies in the lobby, and you can go check it out. The Eclipse on Monday. Captain Kip, he's dialing in now. He found his way down. Close out on skis at great prices at the Ski Depot in Jay and Carabasa Valley. It's closing in on that deadline. Get yourself in if you are interested in a town manager position here at this unique community. And we're looking for just the right person, huh? And you can check us out on all of these social medias. Also on YouTube, we're streaming live. And our website, we're streaming live at WSKITV.com. Also on Roku. That's my favorite right there. Check it out on Roku. And lots and lots of people watching. And or, of course, right here on Spectrum, on good old Channel 17. Or <laughs> and we've got Secret Agent Kip Files joining us. I see you got some new glasses, Kip. Hey, um, is the eclipse happened yet? Have you have you seen it at all? I've been looking. I'll tell you, these aren't that good skiing. No, but it's not what? good for flat light, I hear. You could buy them right now at the Downhill Supply Company or the Sugar Loafer Shop or even down at the Touring Center. So, um, Outdoor Center, excuse me. Well, if you need some for Monday, 
they've got them. It's pretty cool. They've got a nice logo on them. So for sugar, kind of um, collectible. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Well, Greg, I got to tell you, I was thinking I was overdressed here when I got to the top of Skyline. I, I'm glad I wasn't. I'm only about 20 up there, and um, yeah, reduced visibility. The, the, the temperature is around 22 at the top of Skyline. Oh, it feels a lot colder. It's in the low 20s or high teens up at the top. Visibility is quite poor at the top. Although we got about up top, I'd say two inches of new snow, Greg. About an inch down here, it's really light to snow up there too. It's stuff you can pick up and 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 blow around. Pretty light up top. It starts to get a little heavier from the bottom of skyline down, like boardwalk. I notice it just starting to get a little heavier, and and uh, the waxes, you know, the ski starts to slow down a little bit. But uh, they didn't get to groom much last night because they didn't have any winch cats available. Oh, so, um, but I did I did come down. I saw that uh, both Kings and I believe Hayburn have both got groomed. Uh, Tote Road. Uh, sluice, but the upper stuff, the real steep stuff, because they didn't have any winch cats, didn't get done. Now, I, I, I thought I saw them earlier on narrow gauge last night. I'll have to check that out. It was kind of, yeah, the, the communication this morning was a little bit more difficult than usual. Oh, just be aware of it, but the snow is, it, it is a real addition to what we had. It's, it's still, even down here, a lot drier than it was yesterday. A lot of wet snow underneath it. Oh, if it hasn't been groomed, it got skied hard yesterday. Could be quite a could be quite a challenge for you. Uh, when they've groomed, eh, of course, with that two inches of snow, it's covered everything, even with the wind. It's enough to cover everything so you don't have those, the, uh, this morning, to have those drifts. It's going to be a great day at skiing. Uh, and I think the, the heavy snow is gone uh, for now, but we could get it throughout the day. If you get over to the Downhill Supply Company, talk to John in there. These are uh, next year's Blaze. I picked the ones 94 underfoot. They've changed them. I have a pair of these, Greg, in my locker. 106 I use for a powder ski. But this one here has, they've stiffened it up a little bit with a, well, I think they put a sheet of metal in it, and, and they've got that new radius on it. It sort of, shit, uh, hourglass, 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 three different <laughs> spots. So, yeah, I know. And so, um, so it, it, carves, it carves really well. It's hard to really tell what it's like on firm snow because I couldn't find any. But... This is uh, this is a great ski, it's the Blaze 94, and um, <clears throat> from Vocal. I, you can't, you could try them out, but I don't think you can. They won't be available till next year, next fall. But you could uh, go in if you like the boy. I'll tell you, John would order a pair for you. It's uh, real good skiing. Now, of course, someone told me there was an eclipse coming on. I think yeah. it's Monday. Is it Monday? Monday. Tuesday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday. yeah we're Monday. So we have an eclipse. So anyway, if you go into the sugar loafer shop, they've got some great. T-shirts. I want to tell you, they're wonderful. I picked up a couple of them yesterday. Long sleeve, short sleeve, with, with the, the eclipse on the front. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's a little around. It's a really cool, cool T-shirt. Very well made. You can look at them. Right down the Downhill Supply Company. Excuse me. The Sugar Loafer Shop. Pick up a pair. It's really, really, yeah, they're really cool. So, other than that, I think parking's going to be a little bit of an issue today because it's just so much snow and so heavy. It's hard to move this stuff around. I've heard them complaining about the, you know, some people have parked in the parking lots and stuff. I don't know, how were the roads coming up, Greg? The roads were, were well salted. They were all just wet and moist, and it was 33 degrees. Uh, so it was looking pretty good. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. bad at all. When, when I, I can have make it, it's good. Go, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I said, when I can make it up the hill, it's, it's, it's well, well uh, plowed, yeah. Yes, whether you have a car or not, you going up a hill is a sign. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun skiing with you and Andy. Now. We didn't get much of a run in, but it was fun skiing last week. That was hadn't done that with you all season. So it's that hard was fun. to keep up with you. You know, you're a pretty fast skier. Well, I just, you, you just I, I, I say, just wear these eclipse glasses under your goggles. You won't worry about ice, snow, bumps. Can't, can't even see them coming. <laughs> well, the thing was that Monday it was so good that I was smiling. I had my my mouth open, so it slowed me down. I couldn't ski well, as fast as you. Yeah, I thought I saw your, your teeth got a little bit bleached from the sun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we love this snow. It's awesome. Where are you going to watch uh, the eclipse from, Kip? I think I was going to your place, wasn't I? With, I told everybody I knew. Head down. To, no. I, you know, I haven't really thought about it. I think that'd be it. great. You can sit on the porch with me. We'll get some I rocking have, chairs. Yeah. I, uh, I have, this will be my third full, full eclipse in my lifetime. 
that I've seen. Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll find out. Depends on what the skiing is like Monday and how crowded it gets. <laughs> that would make you 120 years old. Well, no, there was one in Bangor in the 60s. Come on. There was another one that I was down off of, where was it? The Caribbean somewhere, I think. I can't remember. I was, out, I was sailing anyway. We sailed right underneath it. Well, and then this one. It. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Here we go, and we're enjoying it. Come on, go skiing. It's great, Greg. I'll take another run. Visibility's poor from uh, bottom of skyline up. Really poor. And dress for it because it's chilly at the top if you're going up. Now, I did hear that um, um, Timberline's on wind hold. It was guessing over 50 at the top. Correct, yeah. So, yeah. So the backside and stuff is, you know, we're not going to be able to get to that at the front face. The, the ski patrol's not even going to get a chance to get to it unless it abates. Got a camera shot now. All we can see is one tree. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right. I'll, I'll take a run and catch up with you. All right. Thank you so much. Kip Files brought to you by the Downhill Supply Company, the legendary Kip Files. And we've got so much more to cover here this morning. Uh, Want to talk about some things to eat? Uh, yeah, after break. After we come back, a little tease. Stay with us. Town of Carabasset Valley Summer Trail Crew is hiring for both experienced and new employees for this summer. The crew is responsible for building and maintaining the growing bicycle trail network in the region. Do you enjoy working outside? Do you have experience operating heavy equipment? Or do you participate in the sport of mountain biking and are looking to learn the skills and art of trail building with your own two hands? Well, we are looking for you. The town is an equal opportunity employer who provides competitive pay and flexible scheduling. Ideal candidates include recent high school or college grads, those with experience with small engine tools or heavy equipment, and those looking to begin or expand upon a growing career opportunity offered in the challenging forest economies of the Northeast region. Please visit the Recreation Department page on the town website at carabassetvalley.org for more information or to apply. We look forward to hearing from you. Your fun at the Shipyard Brew House, a slopeside delight for skiers and snowboarders alike. We're serving up breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So stop them before, after, or in between your runs. The beer's always flowing and the good times are rolling. So check our website for midweek specials and the live music schedule. I pray all day with cold brews and mountain views at the Shipyard Brew House. What's your favorite thing to eat here at the bag? The bag burger. Bag burger. You love the baked potato, actually. Half in the bag punch. I love the lifty lemonade. Cheeseburger soup, very good. Pepperoni pizza. Uh, burger. Yeah, Valentine. Pastrami sandwiches. Uh, chicken wings. Bag burger. Cheese pizza. Bag burger. Whatever's on the menu. All of it. Backco Financial is an independent wealth management firm here in Falmouth. We pride ourselves on building trustworthy, long-term relationships so that we can be the first call our clients make when they have questions about investments, finance, and life changes. Our team has a variety of expertise and professional designations that allow us to provide holistic financial planning and tailored asset management. Backco Financial. Honest, independent, experienced. All right, we are back, and we're taking a look at uh, the quad cam shot. As you can see, uh, the, the fog is cleared at Bowinkles, <laughs> so you can go to Bowinkles. We're still stuck in the clouds up here. You're still stuck in the clouds, kind of turns us up there at the top, and uh, not much visibility up there. Tell us, not. tell us what's going on up there, Connor. Um, so right now we have a little bit of wind, nothing crazy. Timberline is on wind hold, but Skyline, King Pine, all the other higher lifts are good to go for today. That's good news. Any races or activities today? Um, actually, not that I know of. Um, you know, Bubble Cuffer, uh, what is, uh, yeah, Bubble Cuffers and CVA is all wrapped up for the season. Right, right. So, so uh, uh, that that frees up some space. Of course, I'm probably out there enjoying it today because all this snow. What? How much snow you think we got? 
I would probably say right around three to four inches were on the chairs this morning when we got up top. Wow. Yeah. That's in, it's in good shape. We're at King of Spring right now. Everything, yeah, everything is pretty much open, including Bracket Basin. And Bracket Basin is open. Uh, you know, Bracket Basin isn't open all the time. How about some just tips for people as they head over there? I would say if you don't know, don't go. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And if you do go and you do know, you got to go with three people, right? I would say three people and just, you know, keep everyone in sight and be aware that, you know, boundary ropes do exist. And what's going to be your trail of choice today, Connor? Oh, trail of choice. I'm always a fan of Winner's Way from Spilly Crosscut. There you go. And uh, I understand you're going to come join us on, on the show. We're going to meet you live and in person uh, for the whole world to see. That's the word that I'm getting. Oh, well, we can't wait. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, Connor. Thanks for what you do. Thank you, Greg. Have a good day, guys. You, you do, do the same. same. Thank you. All right. There it is. And let's talk about some things to eat now, shall we? We can, and I would recommend that you start off with a good cup of coffee. And uh, Andy smelled mine this morning. I didn't bring him one, but it's Carabas Coffee, Jamaican Me Crazy. The Rack Rescue Breakfast Shack open. That's right. And you can check out Peach Belly uh, tonight. And there it is, Java Joe's. That's where you can get your signature cup of coffee. 7 a.m. they open at delis. Four different ways to order. Soups made from scratch. Great desserts. Hearty breakfast. And 45 North has got Robin Cottle playing 3 to 6 and a brunch Saturday, Sunday, 11 till 1 o'clock. A located at Sugarloaf Mountain Hotel, Solar Equips Party, 2.30 to 4.30 Monday at the Shipyard Brewhouse. Brian will join us and tell us more about what's happening at Shipyard this morning. Bowinkle's open daily and uh, the fog lifted above that so you can uh, create some fog while you're sitting there at Bowinkle's. And right there, the bag and kettle, they have got... Uh, Famous burgers, wood-fired pizza, and more. The Juke Joint Devils, 3 to 6 at the Widowmaker. And you can enjoy their menu there as well. And great brews. Happy Hour, 3 to 4. And Masamigos, delicious Mexican fare at Masamigos. They're open 11 till 9. And fresh produce, meats, beer, wine, and uh, good times right down there at Mountainside Grocers. And the Sugar Bowl, you can check out the eight bowling lanes, 15 HD TVs, and they've got specials each and every night. Try the fried chicken. And Flagstaff General Store, going to be a busy place up there as we approach the eclipse here on Monday. The Looney Moose will be serving up breakfast on Monday. They're not usually open, but they're going to open until noon. And if there's a line, they'll keep feeding. Good for them. And at Farter's Market and Hardware, you can get just about everything you need. Maybe you want to have a picnic during the eclipse. That'll be the place. And the White Wolf Inn, and they've got eclipse glasses, T-shirts, and more. They, they are ready for a party. And the Pines Market, open full grocery store, much more. No one beats their meats cut right there on premises. And the, the Trails End Steakhouse and Tavern, of course, they'll be celebrating. Uh, the uh, Eclipse, and they'll be celebrating all weekend. They're doing a warm-up all the way through the weekend till Monday. Know before you go, that's what we do here at WSKI-TV. You can check us out. We're streaming on our website, WSKITV.com. And we have our quad cam, uh, which we don't know. Everyone's going to want to see what's going on up here. There's our uh, shot of our website. You can find so much information. Check out the quad cam. You can check out uh, Eclipse information that has been posted on there. Uh, where to go to get those uh, custom-made uh, t-shirts and uh, everything that's open and is uh, here for you to enjoy is available for you to check out on our website. And uh, Sugarloaf has got the ski eclipse. They are ready. Once the access road fills, it's going to be full here. Um, so you might want to consider carpooling. You can go to our website and find out more information about it. And uh, we'll bring you more, too. There's Julie Swain right there with one of her uh, collectible T-shirts. We've got much more. We're going to talk to the State of Maine High Peaks Alliance, uh, and we're going to talk about a project that they've been doing and they've been working on uh, for some time. Fresh off the press, we've got the scoop for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The WSKI TV 17 weather report is brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. Visit them in the village or online at sugarloafmountainside.com. Good morning, skiers and riders, Sugarloaf and Carabasset Valley. Hope you're ready for a great weekend enjoying the outdoors here at the mountain. 
Time for your latest local forecast. You can find this and much more at our website, WSKITV.com. And this weather brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. We'll see snow showers throughout the day. Could see an inch or two of accumulation, which is some great news. Grab those goggles that show some visibility out there. 35 to 37 at the base with a light north wind. Summit temperatures 24 to 26 with a noticeable breeze. So we'll have to keep an eye on those upper lifts. Stay tuned to the Mountain Report. We'll keep you updated. Isolated snow showers continue for Sunday. We'll see highs getting into the mid-40s at the base. Lower 30s at the summit. And still holding on to a bit of a noticeable breeze up towards the top from the north-northwest. Sunny skies for the big day on Monday. The eclipse should be a great day for it. 54 for a high, so nice and warm. Then mostly sunny skies for Tuesday with a high of 50. And then, look at that, some snow showers roll in for the day on Wednesday. So get out there. A great forecast for this weekend heading into the eclipse on Monday. Hope you can get out and enjoy it. As far as our trail conditions, 154 trails to ski and ride on. 12 lifts getting you there. 54 groomers. Uh, groomers and we're looking at powder and packed powder over 19 inches of new snow in the past couple of days so get out there and enjoy it uh, bracket basin and everything's open snubber gets going at eight o'clock 8 30 scott duster and skidway nine o'clock the muscalator skyline and double runner west get going at 8 30 as well and the super quad open till 4 20 today west mountain returns today at eight o'clock that'll get you up from the golf course to the bucksaw express which is going at 8 30 king pine and Wolfetree tree at 8 30 as well for the east side and 9 a.m the uppermost lift timberline We'll get going at 9 a.m., winds, weather, and conditions permitting. As far as grooming, last night, Timberline, Bridal Chain, Tote Road, Kings, and Hayburner, as well as Comp Hill, Narrow Gauge, Spillway and Sluice, all gone to the line, as well as Wedge. Uh, over on the east side, Hallback, Ram Down, and Lower Boom Auger. Down lower on the east side, Wiffle Tree, Buckboard, Springboard, all kinds of good stuff over there. And Scoot, Windrow, West Mountain, Horseshoe, and Good Chance on the west side, as well as all of the new trails uh, off of the new Bucksaw Express lift will be nice and groomed out for you and all the trails around the base area as well uh terrain park stopping grounds open we're building drop line uh but plenty of fun to be had with the terrain parks have been doing a great job also the outdoor center is open uh through the eclipse day uh they'll have the bull moose cafe open as well from noon to four and the sugarloaf sports and fitness center for some great indoor activities or some great food at the cafe the Trails End, Steakhouse and Tavern, right up on, in Eustace Village. Uh, they've got events happening all weekend long, live music and specials, as well as the Rack Barbecue right at the bottom of the Axis Road. And don't forget to throw out their Rack Rescue Breakfast Shack from Saturday and Sunday mornings. They'll have that offered. And the Maiden Main Shop right on Main Street in Kingfield. They've got Eclipse t-shirts on special, so check that out right on Main Street. And Main Street in Stratton, the Looney Moose Cafe. Bob will be opened up for Monday, April 8th until noon for breakfast. And lots happening here at the mountain for the eclipse as well. Uh, parties on the beach, up at Bullwinkles, all kinds of good stuff going on. And the Super Quad will once again be open until 420. The Quad Cam is available so you can see exactly what's happening at the base of the mountain in real time so you can know before you go. Also, check it out. We've got our live mountain reports this weekend. And next weekend, we'll have a watch and win. So be sure to tune in whether you're watching us streaming or on Channel 17. Hello, I'm Earl Morris, owner of Bridgewood Interiors. For 31 years, we've been providing you, our fellow sugar loafers, with furniture, flooring, mattresses, and window treatments. But what many sugar loafers don't realize is the amount of construction and new renovation work that we do. From fireplaces to kitchens to bathrooms and steam showers, we do anything inside the walls of a house. We love what we do and hope you'll shop locally with us. I'd like to say it's clearing up, maybe a little bit, but uh, I don't think I'd be telling the truth. So look at that. We got a little bit of fog there. Uh, Timberline starting the day off on wind hold, um, but that's it thus far. There is some wind up there um, to deal with, but there's also some great snow to deal with. And we got uh, 153 trails open, and uh, we have got 
In the last 48 hours, 20 inches of snow. Uh, Captain reported 22 degrees up there at the top, so make sure you dress for it today. A couple of guests here joining us here this morning, and uh, we want to introduce uh, Lloyd Gritscombe and also uh, Brent West. He is the executive director of the High Peaks Alliance, and I'd like to welcome both of you here. Yeah, thanks for having us. And you're the, uh, you are on the board. I'm sorry, your Yes, title? I'm a co-founder, and um, along with Roger Lambert, uh, Tom Saviello introduced Roger Lambert and I. He was the master main guide from Strong. Yeah. Said you guys need to speak, and yeah. so we've uh, we co-founded the High Peaks Alliance 17 years ago. 17 years ago. So um, this is your second trip. You've been here before, huh? You you thanks you've to Nadine, done this. Yes. Yeah, with Nadine, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. So uh, you had mentioned uh, a project that you're working on, uh, but let's talk about the High Peaks Alliance. What its uh, purpose is first. And we'll begin with that. Sure. You, you know, our major goal is just to keep this area wild and accessible. And that is because a lot of land is privately owned, and we all love to use it, and we're very thankful for the private landowners. Um, but a lot of these places we have lost access to. Yeah. Um, you know, in my short life, we've lost uh, access to over 100,000 acres just in this neck of the woods as far as gates up, posted signs, stuff like that. So our goal is really to help conserve access, offer new access, build trails, and uh, engage the community in that work. Now, why do you think that, uh, that, that you have lost access? Can, can you comment on that, or is that information you don't Well, um, I think in Maine we've had a social contract for access, and that started back when everyone worked in the forestry industry. All the employees and community members used to show up at the mill, and the mills owned a lot of the land. And it was a good handshake agreement, you know, in exchange for access, you know, the community took care of the land, but also everyone was locally based. Um, since the 90s, most of the mills have closed in the area, and most of those communities have fallen apart in southern Franklin County, and recreation is starting to replace that, but all the land now is, a lot of the land has changed hands, and the people who have bought the land haven't been privy to that long-term social contract. So... I think part of it's an education issue, and but other parts of it are um, new uses. Like within the last 30 years, ATVing has gotten really big. There's right. been all these different uses. So there's just an increased need to manage it all because more people are coming here to enjoy it. Yeah, and, and, and as land changes hands, they, they, they probably don't know of the, the rich history that we've had of people being very gracious about using there. Or even Maine's like, we have one of the strongest landowner liability laws. You know, if you go out on someone's land and accidentally hurt yourself, the landowner's never liable. So that's that's been a strong protection in Maine that promotes that private a uh, access. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's yeah. a great thing. So this is a part two. Uh, your guide that you came out. This is a brand new. Uh, tell us about what, what people will find in this because there's a lot of great information and where they can find this. Yeah, so the State of the High Peaks is a project, a long term project of the High Peaks Initiative, which is uh, 12 different NGOs, nonprofits that work uh, collaboratively to conserve some of these awesome mountains and offer access. Uh, you know, so many partners, Maine Appalachian Trail Land Trust, Trust for Public Land. We have um, Greater Franklin Development, uh, and it's all listed in the book. But what we've tried to do is look at all the recreational assets we have in this uh, region, which we call Farmington kind of the gateway to the high peaks, and it flows up through Rangeley and Sugarloaf. Sure. And uh, over the last year, this report has documented over 130 locations of either official, unofficial, um, you know, official trails on private land and document all those and try to get a sense of what the condition of those. So the idea is the ones that are unprotected, we can protect. So examples like in Route 4, you're driving up Route 4, there's a beloved spot called the Blue Ledges. They've done archaeological digs there. They've shown people have used that spot for 8,000 years. Wow. So if you have a place on the ground that we're still using after 8,000 years, maybe that's worthwhile setting aside for the next generation. Maybe so, huh? You know, and so that's what we think, and we, we hope people can use that to realize there's a lot to be taken for granted up here, and we're the group that you can join if you want to make sure there is something to pass down to the next generation. 
Were there any surprises uh, in, in any of these areas? Did you discover anything that you didn't know prior to this? Well, there are lots of surprises that come from if you, if you haven't failed, if you haven't given up. And so if you just keep moving, you'd be amazed uh, the support you can find yeah. to take advantage of opportunities. Yeah. Well, there's one surprise I had was um, there on the south peak of Mount Abram, there's a carn that we found because we, we bushwhacked up there. Like, that has to be a good overlook. And we found this carn that was seven feet tall. And What's, what's a carn? Uh, it's a Stone. stack wow. of rocks that helps people navigate on top of mountains. Yeah. But we found that, and 67 years prior, one of our supporters uh, had a picture of himself next to it. So that's another example of like all these Dave undiscovered Field places the Appalachian Trail. that we just keep rediscovering and that are just incredible places to go. And so, you know, long term, if we can build the support, we're going to make some great new trails. We're going to have more uh, permanent access, and that's, that's the goal. Yeah. So the data that you have, uh, it tracks the interests of people in different towns, correct? Like uh, the report that they just did here that they're not quite done yet in Carabasa Valley. People got a chance to say what recreation they enjoy and what they like to do. Is that the data that you digest? And so we've looked at it a little differently. I like to say the best proof of community support is how well-worn the trail is. Mm -hmm. And so instead of going out and asking people what do you like, we wanted to see what has been well-liked and well-loved for a long time. So the, the big trends are um, you have to know about it first. So that's why places like Tumbledown, which is incredibly beautiful, right. gets an incredible amount of use. Right. Uh, like this spring, we're going to put out a Scenic 7 guide, a hiking guide, uh, and that's to kind of disperse some of that use. And so um, there's also our approach is that a lot of the conservation groups have mapped ecological data really well, like where are the salmon, where are the brook trout, where are the Bicknell's thrush, but surprisingly they don't have good data for where uh, uh, humans like to use it, where the people like to go, and so that's something we get to share, like we've, we've mapped over 1,700 miles of trails, uh, including motorized trails, and so we have a great understanding of what makes up the whole recreation network in the high peaks. Right. So, so this the one quick surprise, the, the Kennebec uh, has got Atlantic salmon that have been propagated and uh, they've gone out to sea and come back and they've been recorded and that's, that's like stunning to me. That's great. I mean, yeah, yeah. So at some of these people, some of these places perhaps are, um, are on the rebound, uh, as you mentioned there. This is uh, very comprehensive. There's a lot of great information in here. And uh, tell us a little bit about this. What, what's this right here? Um, so for all 130 locations that we surveyed, uh, our technician that we hired for a year ranked them based on what the overall experience was, aesthetics, was it handling, the use it had well right now. Um, and we found most trails in the area are probably of average rating. Like they have some issues, but they have a lot of good mm -hmm. um, aspects to them too. So that also, um, we've collected pictures and GPS of every, every trail that we monitored and, and looked at. So that should all be helpful moving forward in Absolutely. conservation planning. Absolutely. This looks like it was a lot of work. Uh, that was, the, you know, the project's been a couple of years, but we had a full-time staff, best job in the world, I always said. He got to go out at least 200 days in the field yeah. for a year, um, and the rest, that, the rest was the computer time. So he was outside more than not, but just to really get a handle of um, every single nook and cranny, every overlook, every waterfall, every private trail, yeah. uh, public trail. And so what we've published is a compilation of the findings. Well, can you stay with us? We've got Captain Kip. He's going to give us a report. And, and he always finds some good things for us out there on the hill. Uh, and he is joining us live. And Kip, what, what do you know out there? Well, I know the visibility hasn't improved much, although the ceiling has come up just a little bit. I'd say you start to come out of it at about Gandhi Midstation, you know, in that area. It starts to lighten up. And then, and then it, further down it gets it's really good I, it, this two inches of new snow lighter up top uh you know boardwalk downs a little sticky 
but definitely skiable. But you can start to feel it in your skis, you know, Greg, it, like, you miss the, like you miss the wax. But uh, it's chilly at the top. I'm glad I, I wore what I wore because it's just so um, so balmy right here. But the wind picks up as you, as you go up. Uh, and visibility drops. Now, the groomers have just gotten off the east and west side, Greg. So uh, if you're not into much powder at all, you just want to have some nice packed powder, head east and west. I, don't, I know they didn't get to haul back. Uh, they didn't get to Upper Gandhi. They didn't get to uh, anything that, that would have taken a, um, a winch cat because uh, they weren't available. But it, it's really good skiing. Just take your time. It feels to me that it's getting brighter here, uh, but I still can't see Bigelow. It's good skiing, and if, you, if you're here for the eclipse, um, head over to the um, Sugarloafer shop. Great T-shirts, I'm telling you. They're really long sleeve, short sleeve, and you can get your, uh, your Elmer Fudd there glasses, your welding glasses uh, over there, too, so you can stare at the sun. <laughs> but it's, I've been waiting to draw a good bead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's good skiing. You just have to be careful and, and, and take your time. If you're not much of a real powder hound, I would stay where they groom first, and then there's two inches of snow on top of it. If not, you got some wide boards, head over where, where it was. Um, you can go up and go down Gandhi Line, some other spots that, uh, that were a little chopped up yesterday from skiing of two inches of new snow. Have fun and enjoy it. All right. Thanks, Kip. We'll get another report from Captain Kip, brought to you by Downhill Supply Company. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we're talking with folks from the High Peaks Alliance, and we'll be right back. The floor you choose can be more than just beautiful. It can also make a difference. By being environmentally sustainable and better for the planet, it can last longer and be cleaner and healthier for your home. We care about the same things you do, which is why at Allwood Floors, we only use responsibly sourced real hardwood and bamboo. And because we know the floor you choose can make a difference. Allwood is available exclusively to this region here at Jordan Lumber. Please come down and see what we have. Ask for myself, Brian, or Alyssa. Welcome to the Maine Ski and Snowboard Museum. Great location right here on the access road at Sugarloaf. Come on by, our mission statement is to celebrate, preserve, and share the history and heritage of Maine skiing and snowboarding, and that's what we're trying to do. Check the website, mainskiandsnowboardmuseum.org for more information. The phone number is on there, you can call, set up a time if you want, or you can come down when, when we're open. Hope to see you soon. Ski in, ski out at Sugarloaf Inn for unmatched on mountain convenience. Boot up in the comfort of your room, head down to your private ski locker, and you'll be on the chairlift in no time. After you spend your day making turns at the loaf, head back to the inn for our prey. With the Shipyard Brew House on site to serve you breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you'll be fueled up throughout your stay. See you soon for your slopeside stay! Shiloh Pond, also known as Dutton Pond, is located by a short walk off the Tufts Pond Road in Kingfield. Recently, the Trust for Public Land, as well as the Town of Kingfield, protected the 215 acres around Shiloh Pond, as well as the pond itself. This also encompasses Little Shiloh Pond. Kingfield Community Forest, as it is now referenced to, is a great spot to enjoy the pristine wilderness, lots of wildlife, as well as a natural brook trout habitat.
sure to carry in, carry out, and leave no trace. For detailed directions to the pond, go to WSKITV.com. We're back, and that is our live quad cam shot brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. They're open today. You can go buy or sell a house today. Stop on by. And 30 degrees as we start the day off, 22 at the top. Uh, Timberline started the day off on Windhold. Everything else is a go thus far here this morning. And the High Peaks Alliance is with us uh, here this morning. And we're talking about a great publication that they have gathered and their organization. I understand you have a new director. Yeah, so we just hired uh, Amanda La Liberty for our director of engagement. She's uh -huh. going to help us bring our communications up, make our monthly newsletter shine, connect with our donors and supporters, and really build a culture around the High Peaks Alliance. So um, hopefully some of you know her. She just came from the Range of the Lakes Heritage Trust, and we're really excited to have her. Uh, she grew up in New Sharon, yep. uh, loves skiing. Um, She's on top of Saddleback there in the picture. But, uh, yeah, we're really excited to have her, and I think that's a great step for us to, to keep growing. And we keep getting more and more supporters. More people are joining, and so there's more of a need to make sure all those people are well-informed. Who finances all this work for you? Um, so the Betterment Fund underwrites the High Peaks Initiative, and then that program was also supported by the Appalachian Trail Conservancy and um, the Main Outdoor Heritage Fund, as well as uh, the county has some TIF uh, funds mm -hmm. for our work of those in the unorganized territories. So that allows us to do both the organized and unorganized territories and map it as an ecosystem for the region. This is incredible information. If you are coming to the air and you want to find out all the best spots and how they rate and description and where they are, how to get there, well, so this is more of a planning document, and so that shows you the state of the area. And so that will show you that um, some of our conclusions that access is precarious in some places, you know, I so see. we should really take care of it. In the spring, though, if you're looking to get out, uh, I mentioned that Scenic 7 hiking guide, and that is seven different hikes that we've curated. Uh, we've had uh, trail, trail riders in Maine write the descriptions and those go from anywhere from our Param Stream Birding Trail which is really easy and welcome big views of the mountains all the way up to like the Bema Stream Loop which is mm -hmm. uh, 11, 12 miles uh, more rugged country and so it, get, it will get you out there and show you some of these other spots that are uh, well, less well known or taken for granted. Right. Excellent, great, great information. We do have so much great stuff here, and it's off. This is uh, some information that people should have. You can find more at highpeaksalliance.org is a website. Yeah, and on the State of the High Peaks page, you can download both reports. Um, you'll have to put in your email address, and then if you want to stay informed, there'll be a, a confirmation email on that too. So that's a good way for you to learn more and get more involved. Yeah. And uh, what kind of great information do, I, 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 do, you got, do you get out of this? Well, the um, nature is a big helper to stay present and undistracted and get out of the loop that we're in a lot. Yeah. And so the, that's the underlying nature. It's physical and uh, mental health, right? Yeah. Now, you're not going to do a moose call before you go? <laughs> well, I, we'd have to get our um, one of our other board members, Roger Lambert, Roger to do that Lambert. for you. But oh, because we've had guy. some of the finest, but I didn't know we well, had the world want, champion. You don't want a, a mediocre one, then. <laughs> 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 well, we saw the in the Shiloh Pond, we saw the moose over there, and uh, we were just I had to bring that up. And I didn't know that you were a moose caller, but I'm 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 captivated. I just got my first moose uh, in 2022. It wasn't a massive one, but we went up in the Allagash and uh, called one in. Called one in. Yeah. I mean, this neck of the woods, what's kind of unique too, is we're kind of in that last frontier for moose habitat. You know, after you get south of Farmington, really, you uh, the densities of moose drop right off. And so, you know, this northern hardwood, these high spruce forests, you wouldn't believe it, but the amount of moose activity up on the top of the High Peaks Mountains, 
like right up to the very top in the middle of the winter, they go up there and browse a lot of the spruce and fir. So, you know, we have incredible habitat up here too. And that's, it's kind of like the main, we embody the main brand, like yeah. moose, maple syrup, brook trout. It's like, we have it all up here. We do. And they're, they're up near Thank the you Appalachian Trail. Trail. Yes. You can't believe where they are. In the Appalachian I mean, Trail as like well? They're up all the way. Yeah. In the it, winter, I mean, you just, you're, just you're, you're amazed where they can get to. I had to give lessons. We, we, the, we have plenty of guides that we can refer people to. We have uh, some outings planned for this year. If you get on the newsletter, you'll get all that information. And um, there's also volunteer opportunities. We have a Fly Rod Crosby Trail over in Madrid mm -hmm. that connects Phillips Madrid all the way over to Rangeley area. And so that always needs a helping set of hand. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to get involved, and also we have a lot of information that we like to share with people. Go to the website, start checking it out there, and it is highpeaksalliance.org. Thank you very much for sharing that information. Some Thanks great information. Us. We appreciate it, and we hope you'll come back and uh, bring us more updates. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah, so much. Lot. We'll take a break. We'll be right back with more here on the Mountain Report. The WSKI TV 17 weather report is brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. Visit them in the village or online at sugarloafmountainside.com. Good morning, skiers and riders, Sugarloaf and Carrier Bassett Valley. Hope you're ready for a great weekend enjoying the outdoors here at the mountain. Time for your latest local forecast. You can find this and much more on our website, WSKITV.com. And this weather brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. We'll see snow showers throughout the day. Could see an inch or two of accumulation, which is some great news. Grab those goggles that show some visibility out there. 35 to 37 at the base with a light north wind. Summit temperatures 24 to 26 with a noticeable breeze. So we'll have to keep an eye on those upper lifts. Stay tuned to the Mountain Report. We'll keep you updated. Isolated snow showers continue for Sunday. We'll see highs getting into the mid-40s at the base. Lower 30s at the summit. And still holding on to a bit of a noticeable breeze up towards the top from the north-northwest. Sunny skies for the big day on Monday. The eclipse should be a great day for it. 54 for a high, so nice and warm. Then mostly sunny skies for Tuesday with a high of 50. And then, look at that, some snow showers roll in for the day on Wednesday. So get out there. A great forecast for this weekend heading into the eclipse on Monday. Hope you can get out and enjoy it. As far as our trail conditions, 154 trails to ski and ride on. 12 lifts getting you there. 54 groomers. Uh, groomers and we're looking at powder and packed powder. Over 19 inches of new snow in the past couple of days. So get out there and enjoy it. Uh, bracket Basin and everything's open. Snubber gets going at 8 o'clock, 8.30 Scott Duster and Skidway, 9 o'clock the Moose Later. Skyline and Double Runner West get going at 8.30 as well. And the Super Quad open till 4.20 today. West Mountain returns today at 8 o'clock. That'll get you up from the golf course to the Bucksaw Express, which is going at 8.30. King Pine and Wolf Tree at 8.30 as well for the east side. And 9 a.m. the uppermost lift, Timberline. We'll get going at 9 a.m., winds, weather, and conditions permitting. As far as grooming, last night, Timberline, Bridal Chain, Tote Road, Kings, and Hayburner, as well as Comp Hill, Narrow Gauge, Spilly and Sluice, all gone to the line, as well as Wedge. Uh, over on the east side, Hallback, Ram Down, and Lower Boom Auger. Down lower on the east side, Wiffle Tree, Buckboard, Springboard, all kinds of good stuff over there. And Scoot, Windrow, West Mountain, Horseshoe, and Good Chance on the west side, as well as all of the new trails uh, off of the new Bucksaw Express lift will be nice and groomed out for you and all the trails around the base area as well uh terrain park stopping grounds open we're building drop line uh but plenty of fun to be had with the terrain parks have been doing a great job also the outdoor center is open uh through the eclipse day uh they'll have the bull moose cafe open as well from noon to four and the sugarloaf sports and fitness center for some great indoor activities or some great food at the cafe the Trails End Steakhouse and Tavern right up on in Eustace Village. Uh, they've got events happening all weekend long, live music and specials, as well as the Rack Barbecue right at the bottom of the Access Road. And don't forget to throw out their Rack Rescue Breakfast Shack from Saturday and Sunday mornings. They'll have that offered. And the Maiden Main Shop right on Main Street in Kingfield. They've got Eclipse t-shirts on special, so check that out right on Main Street. And Main Street in Stratton, the Looney Moose Cafe. Bob will be opened up for Monday, April 8th until noon for breakfast. And lots happening here at the mountain for the eclipse as well. Uh, parties on the beach, up at Bullwinkles, all kinds of good stuff going on. And the Super Quad will once again be open until 420. 
the quad cam is available so you can see exactly what's happening at the base of the mountain in real time so you can know before you go also check it out we've got our live mountain reports this weekend and next weekend we'll have a watch and win so be sure to tune in whether you're watching us streaming or on channel 17. hi i'm deb pierce i've been a sugar loafer since 1975. my style is really low pressure um, and nurturing i like helping people through the whole process make them feel comfortable. Um, I'm a good listener. This market is crazier than I've ever seen. So if you're looking to buy or sell, please come see me here right in the village. Um, we're here every day, nine to five. All right, we're back. It's a mountain report, and it's 30 degrees starting the day off. Mountainside Real Estate bringing this live quad cam shot, and we are looking at Timberline starting the day off on Windle. Everything else is a go thus far. Ah, the singles. Do you think they're all single? I don't know. Well, look at that. Yep, big groups. You can go up there, meet some new friends there, and going to be a lot of people enjoying uh, uh, lots of new snow. It's 22 degrees up there at the top. Make sure you dress for it, as the captain said, um, and uh, charge your gloves before you go. And Brian Castle joins us from the Shipyard Brew House. We always love to have Brian on because he brings beer with us, and he, he brings a great information about what's happening at Shipyard. Brian, yeah. how are you, my friend? Nice to see you, Greg. Nice Thanks to for see you me. as well. And uh, we noticed that you're having an eclipse party. Yeah. Uh, and it's on Monday yep. during the eclipse. Yeah. What what do you got going on? Well, we just we have a great space to be able to you know go outside and actually view it. We have um, we've been stocking up on those glasses. Yeah, yeah, those, yeah. Uh, eclipse glasses, and uh, we're definitely filling up. Like w before, me and Stacy even really knew about the eclipse. It was like, ping, ping, ping. We were getting like a bunch of reservations on April. Eighth, and we we're like, what is, what's, what's going, going on? on? What's going on? And I guess we were one of the last ones to hear, unfortunately. But a, a <laughs> bunch of people wanted to come up here and eat dinner, and you know, uh, or lunch and dinner, and be able to go outside and watch the eclipse. So we got a great deck outside to be able to go and watch the whole thing go down. Um, we're also right in front of you know the uh, bunny slope. So if you want to like walk up to the top of the bunny slope, or you know, go hang out out there. Um, it's a it's a great place to be able to view it, and um, I just I recommend making a reservation. But um, you know we we got two bars going that day, um, the back bar and the main bar, and we got plenty of space. Um, so if you want to just hang out with your friends, grab a drink, grab some food, while you're waiting for the eclipse yeah. or afterwards, please do come to the shipyard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's on Monday, yeah. but you've got entertainment uh, planned for reggae, yeah. which is a stellar. Yeah, I want to talk about that because I'm really excited about that. I mean, um, we got on April twelfth. We have Red Lion Rockets. Yeah. On the th and that's from six to nine p.m. Uh, on the thirteenth, we have Analog Salad from eleven a.m. to two p.m. And then the one that I'm really excited about is um, the Rigometrics on the thirteenth from six to nine p.m. Um, that's going to be like in our back room. We're actually all the shows that we have from six to nine p.m. are going to be in our ballroom. Yep. So we're going to have a ton of room for dancing and doing whatever you want to do back there. Legal stuff. <laughs> um, and then we got Doug Morgan finishing out um, our season on April 14th yeah. um, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So that's actually going to be the last day we're open is uh, the 14th. Oh. Yeah, the reggae, yeah. yeah. So I um, want to go out with a bang, and we're, we're excited to have some good live music that week. Um, we're kind of working through some stuff, kind of running low on the inventory, so we may have some, you know, discounted beer specials on uh, Reggae Weekend on that Sunday. We might be trying to get rid of stuff, so... If you want to help out. Yeah, please, you know, <laughs> that Sunday, Saturday, um, drop by the shipyard because you might, you know, end up getting some, like, discounted, you know, yeah. beer or food or whatever that may be. Um, it's kind of play it by here. year right now, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Please stop by. Now, all these are 21 plus. Um, these are not all 21 plus, okay. right? So um, we definitely do uh, discourage um, people from, you know, hanging out in the ballroom from our 6 to 9 p.m. shows. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of keep an eye on that. So me and Stacey kind of keep an eye on that, the bartenders. But um, it's not 21 plus if, if you'd like to bring your kids. We also have a game room in the back um, if your kids want to, like, go in 
go into the game room, give them 20, 30 bucks. They'll be off your back for 30 minutes, maybe. All the fun games. Yeah, it doesn't take that long for them to crank through that money, but we got plenty <laughs> of games and stuff, so it's going to keep your kids occupied about, well, you want to listen to some music and, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, it, we, so got it, we got it, something for everybody. Family friendly. Yeah, family, family friendly. friendly. Yeah. And uh, you're still doing pizza and, and beer delivery this weekend? Yes, we're going to try to. We've it, It's been difficult, obviously, with how busy we've been um, yeah, yeah, on the yeah. weekends to do delivery, but it's always um, available for takeout. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, most everybody that's calling in is, is super close, is in the area. Um, and we can we can try to make it work with delivery most of the time, but it's always available for takeout. So if you want to, you know, come grab a beer, a couple pizzas, um, yeah, just give us a call and we'll try to try to work it out for you. Try to yeah. make it um, as easy as possible for to get a pizza and a, and a right. six pack of beer in your hands as soon as possible. The essentials. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stay exactly. with us, Brian. We're exactly. going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Brian Castle from the Shipyard Brew House talking about what's happening today and all the way till the end of the season. We'll be right back. Who's tired of standing in the beer aisle trying to make sense of 1,000 different IPAs? Can't there just be an easy choice? Shipyard's American Pale Ale cuts through the noise. It is the American Craft Classic. Perfectly balanced and bursting with just the right amount of modern hop flavors. This is a beer for beer lovers that just don't need to overthink it. Delicious, flavorful, craft you can rely on. Shipyard APA. The perfect choice every time. Backhoe Financial is an independent wealth management firm here in Falmouth. We pride ourselves on building trustworthy, long-term relationships so that we can be the first call our clients make when they have questions about investments, finance, and life changes. Our team has a variety of expertise and professional designations that allow us to provide holistic financial planning and tailored asset management. Backhoe Financial, honest, independent, experienced. We're back. Look at that. We've got lots of happy people enjoying uh, the fact that we have got no wind at the Super Quad. But we do have at Timberline, we've got some wind, and it's uh, closed right now. Timberline's starting the day off on Windhole. But lots of snow. we got about 20 inches of fresh powder snow out there. Uh, and get out and enjoy it. Winter continues here at Sugarloaf, and the temperatures reflect that. So uh, as you get out there today, de definitely want to dress for it today. Uh, it was about 22 degrees up there at the top. Uh, Brian Castle is with us uh, from Shipyard Brew House, and what do we got here? Uh, a new look for Shipyard yeah. Export. The other way? Yeah, the yeah. Export. Um, yeah, it's a new look. It looks great. Um, we were just talking about like can designs and, and yeah, you know yeah, why yeah. people buy certain cans. Um, it's a good new look for a classic, you know, our flagship beer, really, um, a classic and something that people are always willing to buy, but now give it a new look, make it spice it up a little bit. Yeah. Golden. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, the cool thing about that's why I brought this here is because we're doing $5 can specials and export is our $5 can special. That's um, a bargain. Yeah. For, you know, the rest of the time that we're open. Um, it is a bargain. Yeah. Can't find a deal like that anywhere else in the mountain for a canned beer, especially a, a, you a, know, a classic beer. flagship canned beer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so excited about that. Come grab some before you run out. Yeah. Um, now, menu items down there, we had some. I, yeah. I've been down there. Every, I wanted to talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, what do you got? Because uh, we did shorten our menu down a little bit, like I said, just running through some inventory yeah. end of the season. Um, but we did shorten our menu a little bit. You still got the ability to build your own burgers. You still got the ability to build your own pizzas. We don't have any specialty pizzas anymore, but if you want to get creative, you can pretty much build whatever you want on a pizza. Yeah. Um, we still have some of the classic sandwiches. Um, you know, the turkey club, um, light stuff. We added some new stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, me and Stacy were kind of like, 
me, Stacy, and Jazar the whole season were kind of trying to figure out. We had the grains and green salad, which is, was a big hit. Kind of looking at some like healthier options. Um, obviously, we want our hearty filling food, but um, we did just a chicken entree dish, um, which is just grilled chicken, uh, rice of the day, vegetables of the day. Um, you could sub that out for you know steak. We have tofu. Mm -hmm. um, we sub that in for some protein add-ons, um, and it's been fantastic. People love it. I mean, yeah. it's just like a nice little like, you know, light lunch or dinner that you know makes you feel good about what you ate. You don't like burn a thousand calories out on the mountain and then stuff it down your yeah. your your throat like as soon as you you know sit behind the bar. Um, so there's always that option. There's always you know if you do want to just eat an entire pizza after you just can't. <laughs> totally fine with that. I do it all the time. So meat lovers. Yeah, I we still care. got the pretzel board, your favorite. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The, if you haven't tried that, that thing is yeah, that's, a, that's crazy. a great thing. It's crazy. And the burgers have been delicious. Too. Burgers Different have been delicious. Vision, very creative. Mainly provisions. That's yeah. where we get our our. Uh, and you can beef, too. Yeah, our yeah. beef product. It's right. Yeah, it's in Kingfield. The secret's it's right out down the street. Yeah, the secret's <laughs> out. I mean, it's not going to taste exactly the same as ours, but right. it, you can go buy it down the street. So, so as we uh, continue, uh, the burger night was on Mondays. You're going to be open this Monday because of the, the eclipse, but that's going to wrap it up. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's as gonna... far as Mondays and Tuesdays. Exactly, go. exactly. We're going to be closed, um, unfortunately, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Just Tuesdays you know, and Wednesdays. Yeah. Just because of. Uh, Mondays has still been really good bar night for us, so we're going to stay open Mondays. Um, then we reopen on Thursdays, full day, Thursdays, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Still, still got trivia on Monday? 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Unfortunately, we don't have trivia on Monday because we have the Eclipse this Monday. Okay. So that's going to be the main focus of the day. Certainly Unfortunately, is. Colin can't trump a uh, you know once-in-a-lifetime event. He's good, not that good. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, no, he's pretty good, no, but yeah. that's that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> that's a pretty big deal. That's right. So are you excited about the Eclipse? I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I'm very excited about the Eclipse. I don't really, I mean... Some I got I've heard some scary stuff. About, I don't know what to expect really. You know. I know. Yeah, I'm excited to. That's what makes it fun to I see think. it. Yeah, and uh, and be surrounded by uh, my great customers and patrons and staff and employees and um, yeah. I just want to add, since this is going to be the last time I'm probably on here for the season. I just wanted to thank obviously you. I wanted to thank uh, I'm a newbie to the Sugarloaf community. Um, this is my first year here and, and the entire community, my customers, my patrons, my staff, everybody that I've worked with, you, um, all been very, you know, welcoming, well, all been very nice and, yeah. and I, and I love this community. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so you back. might be sticking around. Can't wait to come back. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah, good yeah, for you. Yeah. But I know that uh, uh, summer months you enjoy surfing. Yeah. You're a snowboarder. Yeah. And a pretty uh, darn good one. Oh uh, yeah, I'll be. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'll be out at Peaks Island uh, this this summer. So, um, if you miss me, come visit me. I'll be out. Just take the ferry out. It's beautiful. I mean, we're hopefully it's not going to be like last summer where it's raining every day. Hopefully, we get you know the opposite of that where it's just going to be beautiful, sunny all summer. Will you be at the shipyard? I will be at Peaks Island. Peaks in. Peaks um, in, yeah. Get right off the ferry. I'll be right at the top of the hill right there. Come and grab. Yeah, we got plenty of shipyard beer. We got yeah. ice pick. We got, you know, some, we got a great menu that we're putting together right now. Um, so great staff as well. We got um, Paul Newton is the GM. He's uh, run. He runs the shipyard at uh, Sunday River during mm -hmm. the wintertime. So um, we got a good mix of mountain and and you know, ocean people that, you know, just enjoy being, living in the moment and, and uh, working at these beautiful seasonal locations. So. And they all merge out yeah. of Peaks Island. It'll yeah. be a great summer. And if you haven't been out there, take the trip and enjoy it yeah. and get out there. Yeah. Uh, we have got, got Captain Kip, Kip joining us here. Up at the top of Skyline, yeah. Top of Skyline? All right, let's see. Uh, all the way to the top of Skyline, we have Captain Kip. And uh, look at that little swirl. How does he do that? It's magical. All right. It's, it's so pretty chilly up here, Greg. You know, I get, um, and the visibility is, um, oh, I'd say 50 feet. Now, if you're seeing uh, some of the ungroomed trails, like Gandhi Line, uh, yes, it never got groomed out for those bumps underneath. And they come up, if you can't see them, they come up pretty fast because there's no, there's no definition, you know, kind of a um, flat light going down through and then reduced visibility. A little tough on my legs. I didn't enjoy it that much. Those young legs that can respond quicker than mine, that uh, there's a great skin to be had in there. I did do lower Gandhi lines, which I talked to you, and, uh, and, and Sluice, and they're both in great shape. They, they had 
groomed them out, nice soft turns underneath, and about two inches of new snow. Now, uh, up here, the visibility you can see doesn't go very far, and it's quite windy. I'd say it's still in the 20s and, and, and blowing up. I'm going to try head off toward the um, east side, see what's going on over there, and I'll check in in a little bit. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Kit Files, Captain Kit Files, brought to you by Downhill Supply Company. First tracks. We appreciate that. There you go. He's out on him. And he's loving the vocals. And that's next year's. You can't get them yet, but you can ask, and they'll order them for you. Thank you, Captain, and thank you, Brian. We appreciate yeah, you coming I on. And, it, Greg. and uh, thank you for uh, uh, coming on and sharing all the great information. Yeah. Reggae Fest is happening down at the shipyard. Yeah, great please lineup. join us. It's going to yeah. be great. Yeah, I'm and looking forward to it. And of course, your Eclipse as well. Yeah. And uh, try some golden. Yeah. Why not? Thanks, Brian. We'll Thanks, take Greg. a break. We'll be right back with more. The WSKI TV 17 weather report is brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. Visit them in the village or online at sugarloafmountainside.com. Good morning, skiers and riders, Sugarloaf and Carabasset Valley. Hope you're ready for a great weekend enjoying the outdoors here at the mountain. Time for your latest local forecast. You can find this and much more on our website, WSKITV.com. And this weather brought to you by Mountainside Real Estate. We'll see snow showers throughout the day. Could see an inch or two of accumulation, which is some great news. Grab those goggles that show some visibility out there. 35 to 37 at the base with a light north wind. Summit temperatures 24 to 26 with a noticeable breeze. So we'll have to keep an eye on those upper lifts. Stay tuned to the Mountain Report. We'll keep you updated. Isolated snow showers continue for Sunday. We'll see highs getting into the mid-40s at the base. Lower 30s at the summit. And still holding on to a bit of a noticeable breeze up towards the top from the north-northwest. Sunny skies for the big day on Monday. The eclipse should be a great day for it. 54 for a high, so nice and warm. Then mostly sunny skies for Tuesday with a high of 50. And then, look at that, some snow showers roll in for the day on Wednesday. So get out there. A great forecast for this weekend heading into the eclipse on Monday. Hope you can get out and enjoy it. As far as our trail conditions, 154 trails to ski and ride on. 12 lifts getting you there. 54 groomers. Uh, groomers and we're looking at powder and packed powder over 19 inches of new snow in the past couple of days so get out there and enjoy it uh, bracket basin and everything's open snubber gets going at eight o'clock 8 30 scott duster and skidway nine o'clock the musculator skyline and double runner west get going at 8 30 as well and the super quad open till 4 20 today west mountain returns today at eight o'clock that'll get you up from the golf course to the buck Saw express which is going at 8 30 king pine and Wolfetree tree at 8 30 as well for the east side and 9 a.m the uppermost lift timberline We'll get going at 9 a.m., winds, weather, and conditions permitting. As far as grooming, last night, Timberline, Bridal Chain, Tote Road, Kings, and Hayburner, as well as Comp Hill, Narrow Gauge, Spilly and Sluice, all gone to the line, as well as Wedge. Uh, over on the east side, Hallback, Ram Down, and Lower Boom Auger. Down lower on the east side, Wiffle Tree, Buckboard, Springboard, all kinds of good stuff over there. And Scoot, Windrow, West Mountain, Horseshoe, and Good Chance on the west side, as well as all of the new trails uh, off of the new Bucksaw Express lift will be nice and groomed out for you and all the trails around the base area as well uh terrain park stopping grounds open we're building drop line uh but plenty of fun to be had with the terrain parks have been doing a great job also the outdoor center is open uh through the eclipse day uh they'll have the bumus cafe open as well from noon to four and the sugarloaf sports and fitness center for some great indoor activities or some great food at the cafe the Trails End Steakhouse and Tavern right up on in Eustace Village. Uh, they've got events happening all weekend long, live music and specials, as well as the Rack Barbecue right at the bottom of the Axis Road. And don't forget to throw out their Rack Rescue Breakfast Shack from Saturday and Sunday mornings. They'll have that offered. And the Maiden Main Shop right on Main Street in Kingfield. They've got Eclipse t-shirts on special, so check that out right on Main Street. And Main Street in Stratton, the Luna Moose Cafe. Bob will be opened up for Monday, April 8th until noon for breakfast. And lots happening here at the mountain for the eclipse as well. Uh, parties on the beach, up at Bullwinkles, all kinds of good stuff going on. And the Super Quad will once again be open until 420. The Quad Cam is available so you can see exactly what's happening at the base of the mountain in real time so you can know before you go. Also, check it out. We've got our live mountain reports this weekend and next weekend we'll have a watch and win. So be sure to tune in whether you're watching us streaming or on Channel 17. Hi, I'm Michelle DeFrosia. I've been the business manager here at Birchwood Interiors for over a decade. I'm part of a team that I'm very proud of. Our company's goal to treat every customer who walks through the door as our best friend isn't just a slogan 
our clients really do become our friends. The trust that our clients put in us is refreshing in today's world. All of us at Birchwood Interiors seek every day to work with integrity and professionalism that will continue to earn that trust. We're in Village West, so come on in, pull up a sofa, and see what we can do for you. We're back. It's a Mountain Report, and we have got uh, looking at 30 degrees, and Mountainside Real Estate is open for business. Oh, they're open all the time. You can stop on by there. Look at that. Snow in the trees. Bracket brace, Basin. Not easy to say, but fun to ski and ride. Bracket Basin uh, is open, and if you're going in there, first off, if you don't know it, don't go in there, but if you uh, are with a group of three, uh, remember, have your phone charged and uh, make sure that you go in there with three because there could be some deep snow in there and you don't want to get stuck in there. So uh, it's some fun skiing though so and riding. So get out there and enjoy the trees. And uh, 30 degrees here, it, a little bit uh, challenging up there at the top with visibility. Timberline starting the day off on Windhold. There is some gusts up there. Uh, we'll let you know if that changes, but everything else is a go. So get out there and enjoy it with all this new snow, 153 trails. And we've had uh, 20 inches of fresh snow here. I know it's hard to believe, but it's looking good. There it is right there. That's the, the Jean Luce building. As you can see, the CVA uh, uh, T-Bar not running today, but look at the coverage up there. Pretty amazing. Uh, just remember to be safe. Uh, look up as you come down. Uh, through if someone is coming down your way you want to make sure uh, with this uh, fog and the diminished uh, uh, viewing uh, that you uh, be safe out there today so get out and enjoy we're going to take a look at some more fun here at Sugarloaf and we'll be right back in just a moment My name is Joshua Tausis. I work for the town of Carabasset Valley as a uh, trail building coordinator. Been uh, working full time at that position for three years. Uh, I've been mountain biking in the woods of Maine since I was a kid. Uh, you know, that, that's what makes mountain biking fun in Maine. It, it, it sort of is still like being a kid. He rides a huge bike. <laughs> that's why I'm out here. Good posture. My name is Dave Richards. I've been living up here and riding mountain bikes for 10 plus years. And I've been uh, building trails uh, with Josh for the last couple seasons and building some rogue trails before that, but those weren't very good. So we started building some really high quality trails with the uh, Carabasa group. Hi, I'm Joe Hines. I've been uh, building trails here for the town of Carabasset for the past three years. Um, mountain biking my whole life. Check, check. Uh, my name's John Beamer. I've been riding bikes for over 20 years. And why I live here, you know, skiing and mountain biking. My name's uh, Curtis Weiss. Um, I live in Kingfield. I work at Sugarloaf in the winter and been doing trail work around the area. Uh, my name is Corey Jakes and 
and I've been working for the town for about eight years. And then this year I just decided to really be more all about it and I'm more regular part of the crew now. You know, typical day, uh, it usually starts as an early morning, uh, you know, 5.30, 6 o'clock breakfast, uh, generally try to be at the office uh, sometime before 7. Um, usually get all the stuff ready to go out on the excavator. Um, we may talk about a game plan. Uh, figure out, uh, Josh is figuring out where we're going and what our project will be and uh, make our way out to the project site, either by foot or by bike. Sometimes we have to ride out because we're pretty far out and pretty much work. Work throughout the day, you know, taking medium-sized breaks here and there. Spread out, try to give each other some space so we don't whack each other. Everything's good. You know, generally until four or five, it's, it's a 10 to 12 hour day, pretty much four or five days a week. Uh, comes through before I come through with the machine, lays the trail out. Uh, we'll cut the corridor, clear all that out, sort of reassess our flag line and make sure that it's exactly where we want it to be. Uh, the next step would be with chainsaws and uh, crew taking the brush away and trying to blend it in with the uh, outside edges of the trails. It's just like snowboarding or skiing where you can, you can pick a line through the woods and really appreciate what's, what's going to be there in the future. And from there, we'll, we'll remove all of that organic material that's on top of the, on top of the good mineral soil so we can get to a good, a good base, a nice hard surface for our trail to be on. The organic material tends to de degrade as a tread surface over time. So if we can get down to uh, good dirt, then we can build our trail out of that and that's what adds to the sustainability, making sure that we're uh, sculpting it in just, just the right way that uh, it works well over time. We'll run the corridor of the trail a few times just to give us an idea of what it would feel like at the speed of a mountain bike. Uh, and we may even get our tester bike out as well. Cutting down in and we're starting to expose uh, what's classically called a bench cut. It literally takes a cheese wedge out of the side of a hill uh, and is what builds the most sustainable trail. And then I'll leave those folks behind with the machine and head into other projects while they're actually putting the very finishing touches with the rakes and the McLeods and uh, lopping the last little bits of the roots out of the outslope. And, uh, and hopefully the end product is uh, beautiful. It's got a nice flow, nice shape. You know, we, we make a really big mess to start with, but at the end, we make sure that everything is really clean and that it looks like we were never there and that the trail has been there forever in its natural state. Hands down, this is the best job I've ever had. Arrange my, my priorities to come do some back-breaking work and make sweet trails. You know, being outside, working, you know, this is the best office to have as opposed to something else, no offense, but. <laughs> so I love being out in the woods. I'm doing physical activities. I'm doing something that's labor intensive, which is great. Um, you know, who doesn't like to go home from work and think, man, I really accomplished a lot today. I'm, I'm passionate about mountain biking at, at first, and I'm, I'm passionate about trails second. But realizing that Carabasset Valley had the potential uh, terrain and potential land access to, to build a world-class trail network right, right in our town. I love trail building for, obviously, the finished product. Um, everything we're doing here is uh, stuff I'm going to use and uh, get to watch all my friends enjoy it too. And, Watch uh, all the kids in the area progress on it as well. It's a pretty awesome feeling to be a part of doing that for everybody and myself. Other than wanting to be a mountain biker and wanting to be a trail builder, I think that uh, you know providing a, a facility for this community for years to come is is the biggest sort of interest in in why I'm doing it now. 
uh, it, it's a boon to our, our uh, whole community. It'd be great. Yeah, we're having fun out here. <laughs> Word is definitely out that we're building quality trails here uh, that are fun to ride. gets better every season up here. The Town of Carabasset Valley Summer Trail Crew is hiring for both experienced and new employees for this summer. The crew is responsible for building and maintaining the growing bicycle trail network in the region. Do you enjoy working outside? Do you have experience operating heavy equipment? Or do you participate in the sport of mountain biking and are looking to learn the skills and art of trail building with your own two hands? Well, we are looking for you. The town is an equal opportunity employer who provides competitive pay and flexible scheduling. Ideal candidates include recent high school or college grads, those with experience with small engine tools or heavy equipment, and those looking to begin or expand upon a growing career opportunity offered in the challenging forest economies of the Northeast region. Please visit the Recreation Department page on the town website at carabasvalley.org for more information or to apply. We look forward to hearing from you. Whew! I'm exhausted, Kip, after watching all that trail work. Well, I don't know how you do it, Greg. I don't know how you do it. You take, take a nap. <laughs> well, what do you think, Kip? Anything uh, new well, out there? Well, yeah, the, you know, the visibility has gotten worse and um, with the squalls coming through and a little bit of freezing rain, a little pellets coming down at you. I came down, uh, um, ran down, with a complete whiteout. Can't see a thing. Uh, so just you got to be careful and slow it down a little bit. It's good skiing. Really tough where, for me anyway, where they hadn't groomed out and there's two inches of new snow and some of the the stuff that was skied on yesterday set up a little bit. It's a little hard because you can't, you know, I'm honestly glad you can't see anything. If it were just smooth, it'd be great. But it's worth going. I'm going to go take a few more runs. I'm going to use those blazes. Those are great skis. Go into the Downhill Supply Company if you get a chance. Go into the um, Sugarloaf Shop. Get your Eclipse T-shirts and stay tuned. We will be back tomorrow. You betcha, Kip. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And that wraps it up for this edition of the Mountain Report. Thanks to all of our guests. Thanks to Kip. And uh, remember, Down on Supply Company, great deals. And that wraps it up. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Keep it tuned right here to WSKI-TV with outside television programming and great local programming as well. Have a great day on the Hill. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Smokin'! 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 Come on down, see what we got smokin'!